Hi, Meet. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, my name is Heath Adams. I am the founder and CEO of TCM Security. We are a dual-headed organization. We do cybersecurity consulting on one side of the organization, and on the other side of the organization, we do cybersecurity training. So um, my background is in ethical hacking and uh, YouTubing and training, so I kind of took that and put that into a uh, organization where we have the ability to uh, help clients and do consulting along that side, but also help students and educate students and uh, bring in the new generation of students into cybersecurity. So what made you move from an ethical hacker to a businessman? Yeah, actually it started with my YouTube channel. So uh, I was doing YouTube, creating content, and I was working as a penetration tester. And I started having clients come to the job I was working at and asking for me specifically, requesting me to, to work on the jobs. And uh, I wasn't seeing any kickback or any benefit from that, so a light bulb went off in my head and I said, hey, I could probably go do this on my own if people are already requesting me. So I ended up quitting my job and just starting my own company and soon enough, uh, people started coming and, and requesting me to do pen tests and that's how the company took off. Great. So what has been your most interesting hack yeah, so I've had quite a few. Um, I'll tell one that is very recent within the last month. And we were doing an internal engagement, which means that we were hacking an organization from the inside. So that assumes a breach or somehow that you got into their network. And a lot of internal engagements revolve around Active Directory. So with Active Directory, there are a lot of, I call them features, quote unquote features, but really they're vulnerabilities that ship uh, out of the box. So if the organization's never had a pen test before, uh, we see a lot of these common vulnerabilities. So one of those vulnerabilities is what's called LLMNR poisoning, and that stands for Link Local Cast Multi-Name Resolution. And what that does is you intercept traffic in a man in the middle position, and when you intercept that traffic, you can respond to events and actually capture a hash of a user. If the user's hash is weak, we are able to take that offline and then crack it. Uh, we were capturing a lot of hashes in this environment, which is very standard, and we were able to go offline and crack these hashes, but the issue was that none of these hashes led anywhere. These accounts were all uh, set up properly. There was no local administrator rights on their machines. There there was no local administrator rights in the domain. Uh, they had no access to anything in the domain. So with that, uh, it started eliminating a lot of the attacks that we could see. There are uh, attacks known to Active Directory such as SMB Relay. Uh, we had an attack called IPV, IPv6 Relay, which was not working either. Uh, so it started to allow us to really have to think outside the box. Uh, so what I did was I started looking at users and permissions that they had in the network, and I found a user that had access to all the file shares. For some reason, they were uh, overly permissive. They didn't have a reason or a right to have access to these file shares, but they did it anyway. So uh, what I was able to do is start digging around these file shares, and I found a, uh, a file within a domain administrator's share. Uh, that file was a... So Heath, what has been your most interesting hack? Yeah, we've actually had quite a few, but I'll talk about one that's really recent. So last month we were working on an internal engagement, and when I say internal engagement, I mean that we're working from within a network. So in that situation, we assume a breach of the network, whether somebody came and dropped a laptop off or somebody compromised an employee. Regardless of the situation, we're inside the network. And most networks that we do internal pen testing for, they are using what's called Active Directory. Uh, Active Directory ships with a lot of quote unquote features that are vulnerable. Uh, they ship out of the box with these vulnerabilities and we abuse those vulnerabilities to gain access to other machines and eventually gain access to the domain controller and compromise the domain. Uh, in this particular pen test, we were doing what was called LLMNR poisoning, which is link local cast multi-name resolution. And that is a man-in-the-middle attack where we sit and respond to traffic that comes through the network. Uh, what happens is those responses generate user hashes, and we can take those hashes offline and actually try to crack them. We were getting a lot of hashes on this assessment, and we were cracking a lot of hashes, which is usually really successful because we can then use that to move laterally through the network. 
In this situation, however, we weren't able to move anywhere because this organization had properly set up uh, their local administrator rights. No users were local admins. No users had access to anything. Uh, they had certain software, antivirus and detection software going in the network, so it was very difficult to get anywhere. What I ended up doing was starting to look for other outside the box ideas. I took one of the users and found that they had overly permissive access to a file share. Uh, we were able to see all the file shares, in fact, where most users were not able to see anything. This user could see everything. And this was just an accidental misconfiguration. It was just a one-time thing. And this user could access any user's file share, including domain admins. So I started digging around and I went into a domain admin share folder and found a document that was a setup instruction document for a Mac instruction guide. So this was how they would set up their MacBooks when they got them and received them brand new. Well, this document had a administrator password in it. Uh, so I grabbed the administrator password that was in there and I did what was called password spraying around the network. I just used the username of administrator and that password that I found and I passed it along to every single uh, computer inside the network and one computer still was using that, that username and that password. Uh, with that one computer, I was able to log in and we can do what is called a secret stump, which allows us to see um, any of the hashes that are stored on the computer and anything that may be running in registry, which sometimes if we find something in registry that is stored in clear text. Uh, in this instance, a domain administrator account was running in clear text, so we were able to pull a clear text password of a domain administrator. Uh, we were able to use that then to log into the network and compromise the domain. So it went from a organization paying uh, quite a bit of money for antivirus, for detection software, doing a lot of things right, to having one overly permissive user have access to one file share that had access to one password that worked, and that password is able to dump out an administrative password, a domain admin password, which allowed for the whole compromise. So it was a very unique chain of attacks that I haven't seen before, uh, but it was also very uh, interesting because it was thinking outside the box in such a way that we'll probably never see that one directly again. Great. So uh, having learned about your interesting hack, the next question is somewhat linked to it. Could you help us understand what you do to keep up with all the new trends? Yeah, it's very difficult. There's a new hacks coming out every day and there's new defenses coming out every day. And uh, honestly, I do a mixture of Twitter. So if you use Twitter, there's some great tools that are available. Twitter actually has one called TweetDeck, which allows you to curate tweets and see certain boards. So I have cu tweets curated for me that are directly related to uh, news articles and news postings from organizations that are posting zero day exploits and the latest and greatest that's out there. The other thing is I think community is very important. We have a Discord server for TCM security and people will start posting, hey, did you see this exploit that just came out? Are you seeing what's happening right now? And the word of mouth is one of the greatest ways to get access to up-to-date and current information. So it's a mixture of just tracking the news and curating different boards and feeds. I've seen people do RSS feeds into Discord servers or Slack servers or whatever it might be. Um, I've seen people curate different blogs and I've seen people just use community as well. And that's something that I, I really use to gain information. Um, any line of advice to the beginners? Yeah, my biggest advice is to run your own race. I think that so many people are focused on what everybody else is doing, especially with social media. We are focused on the big bug bounties that are paid out. We are focused on uh, the people that are getting all the latest and greatest certifications, and we really need to focus on ourselves. Uh, we aren't going to just pick up bug bounty hunting on day one and start becoming $50,000 bug hunter, $100,000 bug hunter. Uh, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of failure to get there. And we don't see people post their failures most of the time. We only see the successes upvoted to the top. So what you need to worry about is making sure that you are focusing on yourself. You're taking a path that you are excited about, that gets you motivated and makes you want to wake up in the morning and to do whatever it is, if that's hacking, if that's specifically web app or network or whatever, you just want to make sure that it's something that motivates you and that you strive to improve to get better yourself every day and use that to motivate yourself as opposed to chasing down what others are doing. You should just be running your own race. All right. So how do you approach a target? 
For me, I do a lot of network pen testing. So a lot of that is related to external and internal pen tests. So a lot of that is uh, what's called open source intelligence or OSINT. And it re involves a lot of digging up information about people. We want to find out, have employees of an organization been involved in any breaches? Uh, if they've been involved in any breaches, can we find any passwords related to that breach? Can we find passwords related to their personal accounts? Do those passwords work anywhere? Do we see any patterns with these passwords? What are the username structures? What are the email structures? Uh, is the organization using a strong password policy? So it comes down to how much information can you gather, especially on the external side, because we want to know, hey, how hard is this organization going to be to hack into? When it comes to external facing assets, vulnerability scanning doesn't really go that far. So what I tell my clients is that if I find a vulnerability that's so severe that I can hack into you externally, then somebody else has probably already found it because bots are scanning the internet all the time, 24-7. So it really comes down to what can we find about the users, what can we find about the people, and then can we dig up information to log into an email address or log into a VPN? Do we need to bypass multi-factor? Do we need to social engineer them? If we need to social engineer them, can we find information about the employees or what systems they use or what they like? Uh, there's a lot of different research that gets involved, but mostly what we're doing is reconnaissance on individuals and people. Uh, we're doing reconnaissance on the organization and we're trying to find out how we can tie those in together to effectively break into an organization. Okay. How do you balance your personal life and work? That is a million dollar question. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do and I feel like I don't always do it well if I'm being candid. Uh, what I try to do is I try to make sure that I take time to spend time with my, my family. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll wake up early and I'll, if my wife's still asleep, I'll wake up and I will uh, start working. So that way when she gets up, I have time to spend to, with her in the morning to have coffee with her and I can chat with her and talk with her. And then I'll work until the end of the day and then we'll spend some time together and we'll, again, uh, we'll watch some TV, maybe watch a movie, go do something, and then I'll come back and maybe I'll put in a little bit more work. I do work a lot, but I think that there's value that you have to have in your relationships as well. You need to make time for your friends. You need to make time for your family. You can't just focus on work 24-7 or you're going to lose everybody that's around you. All right. Last but not the least, how has been your experience with B-Sides Ahmedabad? It has been fantastic. I didn't know what to expect when I came out here. Uh, I made a promise last year that if I was ever invited to Keynote because I couldn't make it out last year that I would come and I'm so glad that I did. Uh, I've got to meet a lot of people and I have just got to experience India firsthand and I never thought in a million years that I would be able to do this. So I'm incredibly grateful to be here and I'm incredibly grateful to meet all the people of India. Um, I legitimately felt like a celebrity and I have been uh, taking pictures nonstop for the last six hours and it's been an incredible experience because there's so many people that have come up to me and just talked about how their lives have changed from, from our training from courses and how we've made it exciting accessible to them and so many people have told me, hey, I work in the field now, I, I am doing this because of you. Um, and you hear that sometimes, but in, in especially at other conferences, but I've never had that experience quite like I've seen today and um, just getting to meet the people and see how friendly everybody is here and the hospitality that's here and um, everybody has just treated me excellent and besides it's rolled out the red carpet and it's been an incredible experience. I hope to come back again. Thank you, Lee. It has been our pleasure hosting you, and we hope to see you year after year at B-Sides Amsterdam. Thank you so much.